Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. Now on yesterday's episode I was talking about how Dan Lin has been officially put on as a producer on the Justice League film set for 2017, but then I started to talk about the DC Cinematic Universe as a whole and again I expressed my concerns uh, about the direction they're going in. And I felt bad because Charlemagne Mark wrote, love watching these videos every morning but the consistent hate towards DC properties is getting a bit too much for me to handle. And I felt really bad because, like any fan, I don't like it when anybody, you know, craps all over something I love. And perhaps I have been a little too harsh on the DC Cinematic Universe. And I don't want to break up with them. I want this to work out. So in honor of Valentine's Day, which is on Friday, I've written a list about what I like about the DC Cinematic Universe to show it that I still care. And that's why I complain, because I really want this to work out. So today, my challenge is not only to myself to only say positive things about the DC Cinematic Universe, but for you two as well in the comments down below. Write down below what you like about the DC Cinematic Universe so far and what you like about how it's going, it's taking shape going forward. All right, so let's start off with what I like about what exists. Now, the only thing that officially exists is Man of Steel. That is our new starting point for this DC Cinematic Universe. Uh, so we're going to forget the Nolan films, uh, and we're going to only focus on what we like about what Warner Brothers is doing now with this new cinematic universe. So the first thing I really like about Man of Steel is Henry Cavill. As many of you know, I had serious doubts about his ability to pull off the role going into the film, but he really impressed me. I ended up seeing the film twice, once at a press screening and then another time uh, you know, paying for it at the theater for Father's Day. Uh, that was excellent timing when it came out. Uh, and I really was you know, taken aback with how much Henry Cavill not only looked like Superman at the end, but how much he embodied Superman. And that's the second thing that I like about Man of Steel. I think it did a really good job of uh, you know, modernizing Superman and making him seem like someone who exists in today's world uh, and fit in, you know, someone it's, that we recognize, you know, not a figure or a persona from the past. But at the same time, maintaining his, you know, core principles, such as being, uh, you know, ju truth, justice in the American way, I guess. And they even were able to, I think, tweak the American way aspect of it and how, you know, to, in play off of how America is perceived today in the, you know, in the global community. So I thought that was great. I really liked the scene when he was at the bar, uh, you know, working like as a, you know, I guess a busboy or something, and he stood up for that woman. Uh, he, you know, but he, at the end, he, he did a very Jesus Christy, you know, turn the other cheek thing. But then, you know, Superman got the better of him, and he went outside and messed up that guy's truck. You know, and, and they still use the Jesus metaphor very, you know, very largely, uh, just as, uh, you know, uh, Brian Singer had and. Uh, Superman Returns, yet I still felt that this, you know, was more palatable this time. They weren't quite hitting you over the head. Maybe that scene when he went into the, well, this is only positive things. It's only positive. Okay. All right. So I liked that. And of course, I didn't like uh, the killing Zod. I just have to mention that doesn't fit with the core ideals, but uh, I'm game to see how they will resolve that going forward. So, all right. So Superman and his, the new Henry Cavill playing Superman and the new modern Superman persona. All right, what else did I like about Man of Steel? The Daily Planet. They really re, um, reinvigorated my interest in the Daily Planet, and they made it seem relevant again to the Superman story. Uh, I think in the comics that hasn't been the case so much uh, recently, but I really like the way they set it up uh, as, you know, as a as a media publication that was dealing with all the problems that media publications face today. I loved the, uh, the casting of Lawrence Fishburne as Perry White. I thought he was great. And I also really liked it. it was a small thing in the film, but the way they had Lois Lane protecting her source, that she refused to give it up to the U.S. government, uh, a lot, like, which you've been reading a lot, or we have been reading a lot in the, in the for instance, in like the New York Times, uh, and a lot of the, you know, they're investigating on the war on terror, and there was a big thing about them not wanting to give, their reporters not wanting to give up their sources. So I liked that real world application to a comic book film. All right, so I also liked Feora. If you remember from my review, she was one of my favorite things about the movie. I thought that the actress, um, uh, like Anche Truel from Germany, was just phenomenal in the role. She really was, I felt, the actual villain of the film. And her, uh, not only did she, was she a really well-realized villain, uh, which I think also, as for a female villain, she really didn't, she wasn't just like, uh, Zod's arm candy. She had her own. She, you know, she was a threat on her own, and I really liked that. And she had her own, you know, ideology that she was going by. And I really liked the lines she gave during that fight and later on, where you know it's an honor to die this way and so and so. I thought that was handled really well. And those are tricky lines to pull off, and the actress did them well. <clears throat> I also thought her fight with Superman on Main Street in Smallville 
was one of the best superhero fights I've ever seen. It was really phenomenal. It was great use of 3D, great use of speeding up the camera, uh, and I thought that the, the, the superpowers for Kryptonians were really well realized this time around. They were pretty well realized in Superman Returns. That was one of my favorite things about that movie. Uh, but I feel that here, again, they were able to take it up to another level where the special effects were were particularly good for a large part of the film, whereas Superman Returns, they're really only confined to a few action sequences. All right, so that's what I like about Man of Steel. Now, what do I like going forward with this Batman versus Superman movie that's taking shape and then Justice League after it? All right, so overall, I've been very happy with DC's casting. I know that's been a major point of contention for a lot of people. It's dominated the discussions that we've been having. But I like the out-of-the-box, risky, bold choices that they're taking. I think they have the potential for huge payoff. And I'm very excited to see Ben Affleck uh, prove the haters wrong in the role. As I said when I saw Runner Runner, I really saw the Batman he could be. I was very impressed with his performance there. I think Runner Runner is worth checking out alone just for that. Only be prepared to fast forward JT scenes. Sorry JT, it's not Love JT Day. Uh, and then also, I think Jesse Eisenberg is really great casting. I think that's a chance to do something really new with that character, even if he ends up being a tattooed former gang member. I'm on board. Uh, I think it could be really a fascinating development for Lex Luthor, and I'm just glad they haven't gone the battle suit route, at least not yet. That's one of my pet peeves about Lex Luthor, how he's depicted in the comics. But Lex Luthor always feels he's the smartest guy in the room, and that is Jesse Eisenberg's specialty. So I feel, if done correctly, this could really be iconic. Uh, and redefine the roles, which is always exciting when a movie can do that. Look what Heath Ledger did with the Joker. Totally redefined that character. All right, so I'm very excited about that casting. Now, Gal Gadot. And a lot of you, yesterday, so many people were like, Grace, it's Gal Gadot. I, too, have come where you have come from. I originally was calling her Gal Gadot because it sounds like, you know, Bridget Bardot, the French pronunciation. However, many people since then have pointed out to me as well that she's Israeli, so you have to go by the Israeli pronunciation. So it's Gal Gadot. And I looked it up, I looked up an interview with her on Israeli television, and while I couldn't understand anything they were saying, I heard them say Gal Gadot. So that's how you pronounce her name. And so, and also I would say, please, you know, this is, you know, DC Love Day in the spirit of love. You know, just because you feel I mispronounced something, try to be nice about it. Okay, all right, so, Gal Gadot. I think, I don't know if she looks the part. I, as I said, I hope she wears pants. But I'm just happy they're doing Wonder Woman. She is an iconic character. She is probably the most well-known female superhero in all of comics. And I think I'm really glad they're finally going to bring her to the big screen. And I did like Gal Gadot in Fast and Furious, uh, the films that she's been in. I thought she was very good. She was one of my favorite things uh, in the last film, actually. Her relationship with Han was excellent. I really liked what was going on there, and I hope that she brings that here. I think that even though she's a former model, um, I think she's not so self-aware of how she looks uh, when she's on screen. That's something Keira Knightley does. It's called voguing. At least that's what I call it. And uh, I was watching America's Next Top Model a few uh, seasons ago, and Tyra Banks had a really great uh, comment where she said the reason that models make horrible actresses is because they're so self-aware of how they look because that's what they have, they're trained to do as models and an actress you know whereas a model needs to be keenly aware of how she her physical appearance because that's what's being photographed uh, an actress needs to not be aware of that because then she seems fake and rehearsed and not natural so I thought that was a really interesting uh, way to get to the root of the problem and Tyra Banks diagnosed it she's a, you know people can make fun of Tyra Banks all they want but she's actually a very intelligent person and really knows her business uh, so, so, so talk about being positive. I, you know, I think that's a that's a big one. But I feel Gal Gadot doesn't fall into that, and she's able to forget about being a supermodel and how hot do I look in this role, and she just focuses on the role. So, that's why I think that maybe she could pull this off. All right, so I'm excited about that. Uh, and also, as I've said before, I think David Goyer is a great idea man. I don't think he has any ability to execute those ideas, and I'm glad that Chris Terrio has come on board to work on the script. But I do think that David Goyer has very interesting ideas. And I like the way he's able to break apart the existing DC uh, universe and reassemble it for the movies in a way that is both familiar and fresh and new. Uh, I really liked that, the, the aspects that he brought to the uh, Nolan's Batman trilogy in that regard. Uh, I thought that even though I, again, had problems with it, I thought that the initial ideas were very good. Um, both, you know, okay, positive, positive, positive. Uh, I just feel that David Goyer, uh, while I don't want to see him executing his ideas, I think that I'm very excited to see what he's come up with. I'm excited to see how he's pieced together this Justice League. I hope he hasn't just taken Jeff Johns. Uh, you know, Justice League New 52 reboot and just gone with that. Maybe that'll be the skeleton for it, but I hope he's added his own ideas because I liked a lot of the ideas presented in Man of Steel in the attempt to modernize it 
uh, and just make it, you know, as I said, something fresh and new. And I think David Goyer does have that ability. So I'm excited to see what he's done and how he's applied that to Batman and the Justice League. Also, by the way, speaking of new ideas in casting, I am excited for Jeremy Irons as Alfred, and I become more and more convinced that they're going with the mercenary route, which I think was really handled well in Batman Earth One. Over on Think About the Ink, I really promoted that comic. I thought it was a fantastic comic. It was a great example of reimagining the Batman mythos in a really great and exciting way. Uh, and so I think that they're taking that over into the DC Cinematic Universe. Further evidence is that on the Gotham television show it was announced they've cast Alfred that's going to be on Fox and he will be a former mercenary who, for, who worked for the Waynes and now is looking out for Bruce Wayne. So I think that is really slowly but sure. And it's on the, con and it's on the television show as well, uh, the recent Cartoon Network show. But, uh, Alfred also has a mercenary past. So I really think slowly but surely that change is taking hold in all of DC. And I think Jeremy Irons is a great choice for that, and it'll really help him to differentiate himself from the Michael Caine, uh, you know, persona in that role. So I'm excited about that, too, and I think that's a great new idea that they're bringing on, and I'm excited for it. All right. The other thing that I'm very excited about and I think is great about DC is their ability to make headlines. I think they're very, uh, you know, PR savvy over there, uh, and I think that's great for the brand. I think it's great to get attention for it, and it's, of course, you want people to, other people to be excited about your movie. So I, uh, even though I feel they've made a few missteps, I think overall I feel they're very smart over there about when they release these stories uh, and of capturing people's attention with a, you know, it might be like a, what? That's crazy! But I think nobody's, like, walking away just yet. I think everyone's like, that's crazy, and perhaps I have to see how it turns out. So I'm very impressed with that. Now, finally, the thing that I really like about the DC Cinematic Universe, and that I hope they don't lose, is their dark, sophisticated edginess. That is something that has always existed in the best DC movies. I think it was a hallmark of Nolan's trilogy and why it works so well. And I think it goes back to the difference between Marvel and DC Comics. Marvel Comics are happy, uh, you know, brighter, you know, the, just like the movies. Uh, and I, I feel that the DC comics are also, you know, darker and sophisticated, and they, have, they really attack the psychological aspects of their character. You don't see Marvel delving in that way to their characters, maybe with the exception of, uh, you know, Demon in a Bottle storyline for Iron Man when he had a you know, drinking problem, but they really don't go into the psychological aspects of their characters, whereas DC does with great success. And I think they've been doing that in their films. So I, and also uh, a much more weighted realism. I think that the Marvel movies, just like the comics, uh, are very, you know, it's almost like the difference between Metropolis and Gotham, you know? So I, I hope that they, they hope they keep that with Warner Brothers and that they, they stay the course of these darker, more sophisticated films. It's one of the things that I thought worked out very well with Man of Steel. Still, um, they were able to, and also balance the light and dark there. Superman still, as I said, had his light persona, his, his you know, his upbeat persona, yet they were able to put real world darker applications on it. Uh, and also, um, you know, they even made, toned him down a little bit where he, he was very bright and cheery, but in an inward way. He didn't just come out and be like, don't harass that waitress, sir. That's not nice. You know, kind of like the Christopher Reeve tongue-in-cheek way that would have been done, where Superman knows he can mess that guy up, and so does the audience, so that makes it humorous. But, you know, Henry Cavill, you know, felt that he, that was, that was not something he should do. It wasn't appropriate. Uh, but then he was a good Samaritan, and I just think that works very well. So that's what I like about the DC Cinematic Universe. Uh, I love you, baby. I hope we can stay together. I think we can. I'm rooting for us. So happy Valentine's Day, DC and Warner Brothers. And I'm curious to see what you guys write down below as well. Uh, I think that that'll be really interesting to see. So it's happy DC Day and uh, write down below what you like about DC and also any questions you might have about DC in general. Remember, I'm going away. So those, uh, I think, six episodes of all of your questions is coming up and I'm starting to uh, make my list of questions. I have a good amount already, but I'm always looking for more. All right, thank you for watching and you can check out some other episodes right now.